Hi, my name's Crystal Stifler, and I'm a social worker at Orthopedic and Spine Hospital. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about what to expect when you are ready to go home. Our objectives are going to be to discuss your discharge, your physical therapy, precautions, and your home safety. First and foremost, we hope that you are going to be able to go home when you are ready to leave the hospital. When you go home, we are going to be making arrangements for some home physical therapy and home nursing care. Much of the information I'm going to share with you is located in your surgical binder in the back pocket. There is a list of information available to you for your review before you have surgery. In this packet of information, you will actually be able to review the list of home health agencies um, so that you are prepared for this when you come to the hospital. We also want you to be aware that we will acknowledge your pain and work very hard to try to get your pain level to a manageable point. You will also, if your doctor indicates, be given a prescription for blood clot prevention medicine. This could be Xeralto or Lovenox. The Lovenox are injections and the Xeralto is a pill. We do ask that you take this prescription to your pharmacy prior to having your surgery. If you are able to take it to the pharmacy prior to your surgery, the pharmacy can obtain the proper authorizations and you can also be aware of any copays that you may have related to this prescription. We ask you though to please not pick the prescription up until you are on your way home from the hospital. This will prevent you from picking up the prescription early and having a change of that prescription during your hospital stay. If you pick up that prescription at, um, before your surgery and the physician changes that medication during your hospital stay, you will not be able to return that prescription back to the pharmacy. So just keep it at the pharmacy and pick it up on your way home from the hospital. If we are finding that during your stay here at the hospital that you are not making progress with your goals to go home, we may discuss the need for inpatient rehab. There are two types of inpatient rehab facilities. The first type is an extended care facility, and this is also known as a nursing home with rehab. The second option is an acute rehab hospital. And the acute rehab hospital would be in our area. An example would be Health South Rehab Hospital or Wellspan's uh, rehab facility. If you come to us from another county, we will definitely work with you on finding a facility within the county that you live. It is very challenging oftentimes to get into an acute rehab hospital. The insurances tend to be a little strict in this area, but we will work with you and we will work with your insurance to try to obtain an authorization for an acute rehab facility. If we are unable to do so, we do ask you to think about having a backup plan. So if you're not able to go to an acute rehab hospital, what would be your backup plan? Would you be able to go to a nursing facility with rehab? Oftentimes insurances will pay for this option. So it's a good idea to know what your options are before you come into the hospital so that you are prepared. You are expected to be at our hospital for about two to three days. In all actuality, we count midnights. So you would want to expect to be with us for three midnights. So for example, if your surgery is on a Monday, you can expect to be here until Thursday. That's three midnights, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, um, and your third day uh, would be on Thursday. A social worker or a case management nurse will meet with you to go over your discharge plan. We will make the arrangements for your home support services. We will make appropriate referrals for rehab if it is indicated. And we will also work with you on obtaining certain medical equipment. Now there are some pieces of equipment that the insurance company does not pay for. So anything that happens in the bathroom tends to be considered a luxury by your insurance company. So if you need grab bars, elevated toilet seats, sometimes even bedside commodes, oftentimes the insurance doesn't pay for that. If you feel that your toilets are a bit low, you can obtain a raised toilet seat from any local pharmacy or 
Um, a place like Walmart or Target sometimes will carry those as well. Oftentimes, again, they are not covered by the insurance. So if you feel like you need that ahead of time, you can pick that up before you have your surgery. Otherwise, bathroom equipment, we allow the home physical or occupational therapist to help you with um, obtaining the proper equipment for your bathroom. We hope that um, you will be able to walk, do stairs, and your activities of daily living will be part of what you need to accomplish in order to meet your goals to go home. On the day that you are being discharged, we do want to let you know a little bit about what to expect. It's a very busy day. Um, your doctor will see you in the morning and determine your discharge. Now, most of our doctors round fairly early in the morning, but every once in a while, based upon their office schedules, they may come a little bit later in the morning or in the afternoon. Once your doctor clears you for discharge, then um, we need to refer to therapy. Oftentimes on the day that you're ready to go home, therapy may feel that you are able to go home after one visit that day, or they may indicate that you need two physical therapy visits. Of course, there's always paperwork, so that needs to be generated in order for you to have the proper instructions um, to take home with you. We're going to change gears for just a moment and talk about advanced directives and living wills. This information is um, shared with you as well in your surgical binder. This is actually located in your binder and the pages are peripherated. In the state of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania would like us to tell you that you have the right to complete an advanced directive and a living um, will. The um, advanced directive part, there's a living will and the living will basically tells the doctor what you would want or not want in case you are in a terminal condition or have an end stage medical condition. The second part of an advanced directive is a healthcare power of attorney. And the healthcare power of attorney is extremely important to us because it does allow you to choose a person to make your healthcare decisions. The great part about these forms in Pennsylvania is they're free. We give them to you, they're free of charge, and you don't need an attorney and you don't need a notary. All you need are two people to witness your signature to say that you are of sound mind when you completed the forms. So if you would take a few moments, look over that form and consider completing them prior to having surgery. They are not a requirement for your surgery, so if you're not ready to complete those forms yet, you do not need to. I do also want to remind you that it does not matter if you're young or you're middle-aged or older, these forms are very important at any step of your, um, at, at any age. I'm gonna give you some homework to do prior to having your surgery. Know a little bit about your insurance. Know what your co-pays are. Know if you have deductibles. Know if you have out-of-pocket expenses for therapy visits. Please take a few moments and review the home health list the acute rehab, and the nursing home list located in the back pocket of your surgical binder. There's a great website out there for those of you that are computer suave. It's www.medicare.gov. It's a great website. You can pull up every nursing home in the county that you live in. You can do a nursing home compare. You can see how many stars the nursing home received and how many state deficiencies they received during their yearly reviews. You can also look up the home health agencies and find that same information for them as well. So it's a good resource for you. Again, as a reminder, if you have a prescription for the medication called Xeralto or Lovenox, otherwise known to as anoxaparin, please take that to the pharmacy prior to having your surgery and leave it at the pharmacy. Please do not pick it up until you are on your way home from the hospital. And last but not least, please consider completing your advanced directives. Some main points to remember. You will need to take antibiotics before any dental work or other invasive procedures to prevent infection. Discharge options are sometimes limited by your insurance plan and therapy needs. Ask about your insurance co-pays and discharge options before surgery. Review the information in the folder you were given. You will find answers to many of your questions inside. Don't be afraid to ask questions. We are here to help you through your surgery and recovery. Effort equals results. 
Hi, my name is Jen Demiers. I'm a physical therapist assistant at the OSS Hospital. I came to talk to you today about your joint replacement surgery with us. In physical therapy, we're going to teach you how to use a walker, how to do stairs, how to get in and out of a car, strengthening exercises, as well as range of motion. You will have physical therapy two times a day, once in the morning and then once in the afternoon. You will also have physical therapy on your day of discharge in the morning and maybe an afternoon session if you need it. Total hip replacement patients may come up from the operating room with a pillow between their legs to prevent their legs from crossing midline, and this is only if your surgeon recommends it and it's to be used while you're lying in bed. Total knee replacement patients, you may have CPM machines in your room. The CPM machine aids with continuous knee mobility, and this too is if your surgeon recommends it. Um, we also still continue to use knee immobilizers, and this is also by surgeon recommendation. Uh, we do use walkers as well as crutches. We will determine what's best needed for you, um, and we will assist you in getting a walker if you don't have your own. Post-operative uh, precautions for total hip patients. There are three things to remember. You want to avoid crossing your legs over the midline as well as at your ankles. You want to avoid bending over 90 degrees to pick things up off the floor, as well as any twisting or pivoting. We do give you assistive devices to help you aid with dressing, like a reacher and a sock aid, to avoid breaking your precautions. Total knee replacement patients, we ask that you avoid kneeling just temporarily um, until your incision heals and the staples are removed. Um, we ask that you do not place a pillow under your knee after your surgery to prevent any kind of adhesions that may develop. Um, things to do to your home to make it safer for you when you return. Um, any electrical cords, phone cords, you want to move them out of your walkways as they can be a tripping hazard. You want to make sure that you have a comfortable armchair and you want to avoid any chairs that are low to prevent breaking any precautions for total hips and you want to remove any throw rugs that may be in your way. Any stair treads that you have that are worn, you can replace those. Um, if you have one handrail, you can install a stable second handrail as well, and all your stairs and hallways should be properly lit when you're walking. In your bathroom, you may install grab bars in your tub. You may also wish to install some skid-resistant pads in your shower to avoid slipping. And the therapist that does come out to your house, that person can take a look at your bathroom and make any recommendations that you may need. Um, in your bedroom, you want to make sure that you have a lamp and a telephone within reach of where you're going to be, as well as keeping the pathway clear from your bed to your bathroom to avoid any tripping. And you always want to sit while you're getting dressed. In your kitchen, anything that you use frequently, you can keep out on your kitchen counters to prevent you from bending and um, breaking those precautions. And it may also be helpful if you prepare your meals ahead of time and freeze them. Main things to remember, you're going to have therapy two times a day as you tolerate with us in the hospital. There may be one session or two on your day of discharge. There is no specific time to leave. If you are having uh, total hip or knee surgery, you will have special recommendations and restrictions to go home. And always remember to modify your house for your return home for any risks of falls or injury. Thank you for participating in our joint class today. If you have any questions about your experience, please call the numbers available to you on the slide. Thank you.